back with another exciting episode of Guru Talk. Of course, I'm Dave Palumbo, and today we uh, have a returning guest. Uh, Greg, the hydrogen man, is coming back, and we're going to be talking about not just hydrogen, but we're going to be talking about cancer. And I know a lot of people are very um, interested in, in new modalities in battling cancer. The old way was basically poison the body with chemotherapeutics and uh Nowadays, we're stimulating the immune system. We're taking in superfoods. And uh, Greg, you were just sharing with me the other day some really cool research coming out of Japan on um, on that. And I, I'd love to you to enlighten our audience about what you've uh, found out. Yeah, the, the Japanese have discovered actually quite a few things in regards to cancer. One of them, I believe they're going to get not just one, but I think maybe like three Nobel Prizes, is that wow. there's a correlation between parasites and cancer. Hmm. And it's a really, really big discovery. They're actually already utilizing the knowledge in Japan. Obviously, nowhere else in the world is doing it yet. They're utilizing that knowledge to actually detect cancer in its super early stages, incredibly accurate, and it's non-invasive. And it's super cheap. It's like 99 bucks. <laughs> so they can... What do they use? What's the methodology? Like, uh, that they actually were able to detect the cancer? Is it like... Uh... Is it like a like nanobots or something like that, or what, what are they using? You know what? It's actually so simple. They literally just take a urine sample, mm -hmm. and then the urine sample they they use specific parasites, mm -hmm. and there these parasites go. They're just fond of cancer, and they can literally go right to it, even in your urine. So there does appear to be something of like a scent. Right. I don't know if you ever heard of those dogs back in the day. They can sniff out certain diseases. Right. And, and in my research, which I've been doing for a long time, I've discovered huge correlations between what I call gases. So different mm -hmm. gases, they actually have certain scents to a gas. That's even part of our scent, right? We're off gassing. Right. And right. so the scent has to do with a specific disease and that's how they're using the parasites and they're already trying to develop. And this will be, you know, a little bit in the future where they mm -hmm. want to use the parasites almost like a Trojan horse. They want to put medicine, like piggyback medicine on the parasites and put them in your body and they go right to the cancer and don't yeah. harm any of the other cells. So this is a pretty big deal. Yeah, that sounds like a big deal. So now they, so they actually can use these parasites, I guess, in some sort of a load and, and they can dip your urine or put them in the urine and they actually will go to the cancer cells. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly right. Wow. And it's, it's incredibly accurate. Uh, way what beyond... cancers are they detecting with it? I'm sorry? What cancers are they detecting with this? Almost every single type. Oh, it's really? Like, wow. Yeah, the, the majority, like well over 90% mm. of the cancers are being detected with this technology. It's called, if people want to read about it, it's called yeah. N-Nose. Okay. And so because, they can, yeah, explain because, because parasites, these specific parasites that they're using, their ability to smell it like their sniffing ability is like mm -hmm. off the charts way beyond the dog you know uh just off the charts very very sensitive rarely wrong um right. once in a while there's there's a, there's small little percentages of when they're not right but in the world of science anything over 80 percent of the time that legal works or is accurate that's a deemed a big success and this is well over 80 percent of the time and really more into the 90 percentile for the most part depending on the type of cancer it's detecting wow how does that how do you spell that uh, N dash and then nose, N nose. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because I believe the N stands for nematode, which is a the type of uh, parasite. Oh, oh, no, 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 yeah, sure. I know what a nematode is. I, I was a, uh, before I became a bodybuilder, I was a <laughs> marine biology major. No, I, I, oh, I took some marine biology classes. Yeah. So it's funny. And I mean, parasites are going to be huge in the future. But I'm already utilizing, so whenever I gain this knowledge from Japan, I, I use it to create a protocol that I've been creating for, I've been working on for quite some time. And yeah. I mean, that's just that's just one of the things, you know, I mean, there's the, the Japanese also discovered that almost every single person who has cancer, their core body temperature is lower than it's supposed to be. Wow. And so they're, core, they're, they're figuring these things out. You know, what, what's scary when you tell me stuff like that, see, I... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a hypochondriac, and I, I feel that if I'm a hypochondriac, here's the actual, by the way, here's the um, National Library of Medicine, efficacy of uh, GI cancer detection by nematode nose or N nose. So that's- There you go. Yeah, they're showing it right here. Here's a nice little study if you guys want to look it up. It's pretty cool. Now, 
Yeah, so I, I have a, and I'm sure a lot of people like that are out there. Uh, there. I think I have every you know, disease once I start like hearing about these things. So when you tell me like your, te- your temperature runs a little lower, I'm like, man, my, I kind of run like 97.5. <laughs> I'm thinking now, now I have can now, now that's because I had thyroid cancer. I still have cancer. My, no, but I've always my whole life run a little low. But um, you're saying like, like how many degrees low are we talking about? Um. I didn't get like exact numbers. I like to be really accurate and stuff. So I don't want to put out any information yeah. that may not be super accurate. I just know that it was well over 90% of the people. They mm. saw the lower, the lower core body temperature. Right. But of course I've discovered things from Japan also that are good for health that actually have been shown to increase core body temperature. Oh, really? This is again, this is how I've actually created my protocols. I go off the data, the science mm. and what I can find. And like I said, I've been creating these protocols for so long and sure. you and I, we're touching base because of a story, a really fascinating story. I mean, I was blown away because I have worked with people, you know, with cancer. Yeah, tell us that story. So obviously before I begin, I do want to say I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm definitely not making any medical claims. I just want to put that out there. But this, um, there's multiple stories, but the one that, that is most intriguing to me is somebody who is actually has a, you know, a colon cancer and it is deemed kind of incurable or, you know, yeah, it it was deemed incurable that this person really didn't have much of a chance. Um, They were giving him, you know, six months roughly if he didn't do any treatment and with treatment, they're given about a year to maybe two years. Mm -hmm. Um, Statistically speaking, colon cancer is pretty bad as far as survival rates. Sure. And he didn't want to do conventional therapies and he did try my protocol. And in two months they did scans prior and to where he's at now. And we were all expecting that he wasn't going to really do better because of the difficulty of this type of cancer, but it's actually been shown to significantly decrease the size of his tumors. Mm. It was really big, even to the point where I got a phone call the next day from a doctor and I was shocked. Oh man, doctors never want to, they don't usually, they don't want to hear anything usually, Right. you know, they've had, they've had their training, but this particular doctor called me up and he said, I want to know everything you're doing. I saw the results. Um, They speak for themselves. And he said, I want to know everything that you're doing. I was shocked. Wow. So he wasn't cured, but he, but the tumors had gotten smaller is what you're saying. Significantly smaller in just that period of time, which is, you know, it's a good step in the right direction because even conventional treatment is for like six months to a year. This was only in two months. What ultimately has he still ongoing with your treatment or is what's going on with the guy now? Yeah. Yeah. He's still going with it and I'm going to continue to keep track of it. And I mean, this is a newer story. I mean, I, I worked with somebody before who was in his thirties with testicular cancer. Mm-hmm. And one of the things with this guy with testicular cancer was that he was actually, he didn't want to do the conventional thing either. And by not wanting to do the conventional thing, of course, I get worried because I don't want to be responsible for something. Of course, life. of course. Yeah. But, but this was his choice. He said, look, this is what I want to do. You're mm-hmm. either going to help me by telling me what you're doing. Yeah. And he did go through the full protocol. He did it correctly. And his, his stuff is gone. So he, it wow. did work for him too. But his right. case was not as serious. I mean, right. testicular cancer is serious. But this other person, I mean, we're talking about it spreading into the lymph nodes, into sure. the liver, into the lungs. You know, it's it's a pretty big deal. It's a very mm-hmm. different story. All right. Well, now that everyone is all juiced up on the story and, and feeling that you did good stuff, now tell us what what what'd you do with them. What, what's the protocol? So the, the protocols that I have, I do change depending on the person. But just sure. to kind of give you a rough overview. Yeah, like an overview, yeah. Yeah, it's a combination of things because I've been trying a lot of things for a long time and there's a lot of things out there that I've seen not work because people are always talking about like the CBD oil, you know, the cannabis oils, the baking sodas, like all these things. And I've tried them throughout the years. I've known people who've tried them who had cancer. But the Mm -hmm. protocol that I talk about is one is actually cleaning water. As crazy as that may sound, Mm -hmm. I just recently saw that there's a ton of towns in China where like almost everybody's getting cancer Mm -hmm. and they found out what the issue is. It's their water. Oh, (laughs) really? The water. Um, I think it was chromium, but I can't remember the exact toxic stuff that was found in the water. But the thing about water in general, like look at America right now. Do you realize that almost everybody in America has something called PFAS in their water? You Have you heard of this? No. Tell us what it is. Uh, PFAS is a type of chemical. Like, for example, let's just take California, for example, because they got extremely high levels of it in their water. And it's used to fight wildfires. That's one one of its many, many uses. Mm-hmm. But it's it's in a lot of different things and a lot of different products. And if you look, if you speak to a toxicologist, um, even the tiniest of levels, they know it causes cancer. So because they're always fighting these wildfires in, in California, it gets into the groundwater. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but that's just one of many things. I mean, almost I would say statistically, 
it's just shy of almost 300 million Americans have it in their water. So it's almost wow. everybody. Yeah. And, and, and there's a way to filter it out. What people don't realize, I know every water filtration modality in existence. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, right. a water, I'm a water guy, you know, and a hydrogen guy. And, um, and basically, when you use carbon filters, not good mm -hmm. enough. Okay. Gravity nanocarbon filters, not good enough. Reverse right. osmosis, not good enough. Mm -hmm. The only thing that actually truly works, and I have all the charts, third party, third party lab testing, is what I call a carbon distiller. That is the only way to fully really? purify your water. Mm. Oh, man. And there's so much other stuff. There's not just PFAS. We're talking about, I knew a guy who would test water throughout the nation. They always find three pharmaceuticals in high levels, always. Wow. And that is women's contraception, which think about how that's going to affect you hormonally, right? Why would women contraception be in the, in the drinking water? From the plastics, you think? Um, I think plastics are a part of it, but the other part is, is because it's one of the most widely prescribed drugs. Many women are on contraception and they pee it out and it doesn't really get removed through uh, the processing plants. And that's a problem. And that's just one. I mean, or the other one. people would say that you know, they're purposely putting estrogen in, 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 the, in the water, right? The, hey, to hey. Demasculinize <laughs> the, uh, the American society, right? <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't, you know what, with what I've been seeing lately in water, I wouldn't I'm doubt it. Yeah. It, it, it's I wouldn't be surprised, but at this what point, um, the other thing is antidepressants. And so a lot of people are on those. We know how those affect you and mm. not only in your brain, but your gut, you know, and just your body in general, not very good. And then the last one they found a lot at high levels was antibiotics. It kills so, all the good bacteria in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So those things, and that's just the things that I personally have seen, you know, through people that I know who do water testing. But I'm wonder, talking about. I wonder if they're putting it in the water, or if it's just somehow fine. I, I just find it hard to believe that those three things are finding its way into our, everyone's drinking water equally. It just it's too coincidental, don't you think? You know, it, it is. But remember, whatever that goes in the human body, we're filtering this stuff out. And if everybody's taking this stuff, but I, but I agree with you. You know, not to put on like my tinfoil hat and say hey, they're doing it to us on purpose, because <laughs> maybe they are, maybe they are. But me, I'm always looking for solutions. Right. I'm looking for solutions rather than just trying to complain. You know, yeah, because I mean? well, it doesn't matter if it's there; it's there, like you said. Yeah. So th those are just the ones that we know of, but also there's so many other contaminants. In fact, I would I wish I would have had my little pamphlet because I do have it downstairs that shows all this stuff in our water, and it's absolutely insane. I mean, literally insane what's wow. in our water. And so part of my protocol, because see, you don't necessarily know what's causing the cancer. It could be something in your water. It yeah. could be something that you're eating. It could, it could be uh, maybe something you were exposed to. Uh, it could be numerous things. And so part of my protocol, what I do is I go after all those things, you know? So, hey, let's clean up the water because if we're trying to treat you and you're continually consuming something that causes cancer, you know, that's not real beneficial now, is it? Right. You know? And so, yeah, I go after the clean water and then I do something that a lot of people don't like, but there's what I call... I have to eliminate a lot of things that they're consuming that I have found multiple studies show the cancer will progress faster or that it'll metastasize. Mm -hmm. So we have to remove certain things out of their diet. It what? doesn't mean that you'll remove them forever. <laughs> um, right. We have what, to remove, those things? Um, remove all meat, remove all dairy mm. and remove all seafood and remove all eggs. Wow. So that's pretty much all your protein sources right there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you can still eat beans. You know, beans are a good source of protein, um, especially an ingredient that I found. Not only is there science from Japan again that oxygenates cancer cells, which is good because it helps, you know, deter them. And that's an ingredient called natto, spelled N-A-T-T-O. It's a fermented bean. Mm -hmm. And they're doing numerous studies on it, which I can't say some of the stuff on here because it'll, it'll get you in trouble with YouTube okay. um, because it has to do with some sneaky little virus out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I found, <laughs> I think we all know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I found a way to enhance it. I'm actually using hydrogen with the natto and they're actually enhancing each other. And where, where do people buy natto if they want to try to, to use it, you know? And, and, well, yeah. I found an Asian food store, um, where you can get it. You might have to look online. I do have a video. It's, I have my videos numbered and three does it come as a powder or does it come as like, how does it come? Well, they, they, they sell them in many different ways. Obviously, they have like capsules, which are just like a supplement, you know, where they take where they, you know, put the main stuff that they want in there. Is that natto so, kinase or is that something different? No, it's the same thing. Okay. Uh, natto kinase. Um, and what I personally do is I actually use the food. 
Mm-hmm. And so I, on one of my videos, I show, actually, I think I have two or three videos. I show how to activate it because there's a way to activate it based on, again, scientific data on studies that were done in Japan. They've done so many studies in Japan on natto. Right. It's unbelievable. They even tell you to be careful how much you eat because it has oh, too really? much protein. Yeah, too much protein. Mm-hmm. And so I literally have to limit myself to one, maybe two a day. But they said, don't go beyond three. It's just way too much. So what, what food source, where do you get nat- natto if I want to buy it, like in a store or someplace? I mean, what is, how does it come? Well, natto comes, I mean, I can grab a little package if you want to see yeah. it. Is okay. it like held in like the, the, the refrigerated section or? Yes, it's, in the, it's either in the refrigerator or even the freezer section. A lot of times they freeze them. Okay. Um, and the stuff's alive. I mean, it's, an, it's been inoculated. It's a bean. So again, we're back to beans. Mm-hmm. They come in little packages like this usually. Oh, okay. And then when you open them, they're all nice and sealed. Mm-hmm. And when you open them, what I personally do for my protocol is never right. eat this stuff that comes with it. <laughs> what this is stuff that, is full of, it's full of MSG and all this stuff. It's, ah, it's sugar, yeah. soy sauce, all this stuff. And you pour it all over it. Yeah. But all I do is take the raw material, which is right. this. It's got a little film on top of it, which I remove. Right. And then you stir the beans at least 100 times. And you're literally going to see them start coming to life right in front of your eyes. They start oh, really? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, they start coming to life. And then right. I put this in the smoothie. I created a smoothie with a bunch of ingredients right. Right. that are highly anti-cancerous based on data that I found. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the protocol, of course. And um, Or you can just put this on top of rice. That's the way the Japanese do it. They just put this not sure. on top of rice, mix it up, put a little soy sauce. Yeah, it's it's uh, the Japanese have a lot of superfoods, and it's probably their number one superfood in their whole country because wow. and how much it's do you so amazing. How much do you recommend people eat of that per day? Like, you know, if you're gonna if you have cancer, I would only do one, maybe okay. two. Okay. They did find that this also thins your blood. Interesting. So very interesting. They said literally don't eat more than two. Also, just if you're on blood thinners, remember this is not mm. medical advice because you right. know I'm not talking to somebody individually. Right. Um, this is something that if you're on blood thinners, watch out because it'll make it even thinner. And in, in Japan, they know that. All doctors tell you, hey, if, if you're eating natto, you might not even need a blood thinner. Just eat this wow. stuff as okay. long as you eat it every day. So you can mix it into your rice. With You could even probably eat, I mean, you, you could have it as your protein source is what you're basically say, saying. Essentially. Oh, yeah. I, I found It's not like I tell people, hey, get off protein, and that's the end of it. I have right. many other protein sources, and I like to use protein sources that have been shown to be anti-cancerous right but i'm saying let's say I'm, i don't have cancer and i'm eating some chicken i'm eating maybe a little fish and salmon and stuff like that and i want to have a meal where i don't want to make a piece of salmon or a piece of chicken or something like that and i can use the natto with some rice or maybe some avocado or something like that mixed up and stuff like that that would be like my protein fat and carb meal pretty much right there right oh absolutely yeah i mean i recommend a lot of like nuts and beans sure. You know, those are big things. And of course, I do a lot of vegetables. It's all basically vegetables, right. fruits, nuts, seeds, and beans. Okay. And do you, you, know, you stay away from the sugary um, fruits? Because, you know, we all hear that like cancer thrives under sugar. It likes to eat sugar. I mean, do you believe in you that? You know what? It's a good question because I think that there's a huge misconception on that. Because I have actually found studies where they, they are now proving that there is a difference between processed sugar... Mm-hmm. And sugar that comes from a fruit. Oh, definitely. Um, I would agree. With that. You know, they've they've really shown these differences. I'm really against processed foods. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, a big one that I tell people to watch out for in, in my protocol is eliminate all oily. Like for example, no stir fried food, no deep fried food, and watch out for processed oils. So when you buy something, if it says you know canola oil, palm oil, Those are even coconut. Yeah, they're all horrible. They use they use chemicals to extract it. Yeah, we, um, we use a, I sell a, a raw macadamia nut oil, which is you know cold pressed. It's it's all natural. It's very high in monounsaturated nice. fats. You know that I only believe in also the same thing: non processed oils for sure. Yep. Yeah, they make me feel really weird. I never knew why. I used to break out. I had so much acne, and once yeah, I cleaned up my diet, you know, trying to heal myself because as you know, I was really sick too. Sure. And, um, you know, everything changed, including my skin. It, it totally right. cleared up. Yeah. And so now you deal. um you you're you work for a company that they actually sent me a hydrogen machine. And we talked about that on the last episode about the benefits, the health benefits of, of hydrogenating water, breathing in the hydrogen. I will say this. I haven't really done the breathing in too much. I haven't had time, but I drink hydrogen. Hydrogen water almost every day. I, I told you the reason why I don't do that is because if I leave that out, my kids will strangle each other with the cord. <laughs> so 
I, but I, I hydrogenate water. And I think even my wife is drinking it too, because I noticed that the levels have been going down faster than what I'm consuming. So I try to drink it like one of those full, you know, things a day at least. And I, I tell you, I feel like I have more energy after I, um, after I do it. I really do. I don't know if that's if the placebo effect. Of, we lost him. But I, when I use the hydrogenated water, I feel like more alert, like almost like I, almost like I drank a cup of coffee. Um, and for me, that that that's great because I don't want to overdo the stimulants. You know, I have, All right, uh, you there? Yeah, yeah, Greg. I was just telling people that when I when I drink hydrogenated water, I feel like almost like I just had a cup of coffee. I gotta jump out and jump back in because it's oh, not the God. sound's not working. Give me a second. I'm sorry. He's a he's a popular guy today. He's getting a lot of phone calls from the president, the, uh, the governor of the state, you know, all that type of stuff. But this is interesting because I I'm a big believer in alternative therapies and I and I believe that foods can heal you and you know I've been talking about this for years and so if you find the right foods and I'm always looking for new superfoods I'm going to try some natto why not I don't I wouldn't say you have to that's the only thing you have to eat but if you incorporate some of these superfoods into your diet it can only help and uh let's get Greg back here hi there you are Greg oh the yeah. phone ring and it seems to kick yeah. me out of I was saying Greg you know it's um when I drink some hydrogenated water I've noticed and I've been doing it for now a couple months since I've got you guys have sent me that hydrogen uh maker I notice it I feel like I'm almost on like a mild cup of coffee like I have a lot more I'm alert but I feel well hydrated as opposed to coffee I kind of feel dehydrated my mouth is all dry and stuff like that and yeah. I just I just like the way I feel on it. So I, I try to do at least a pitcher a day of the stuff, The which I, I don't know if it's a liter or I don't know what that thing holds. but um, 1.5 liters. Yeah. So, I mean, and I'll just l literally do what you do. I just guzzle it down. I don't like sit and sip it all. Uh, then I won't get it done. I just go there. I take the glass. I guzzle it down. I do another one later in the day. And yeah. that's it. And I'm done. And you know what? I do feel better after it. And I and I will say that, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty honest. If I didn't feel any different, I'd be like, well... I really don't feel anything, but I, I definitely feel better, you know, after doing it. So for me, that's something I'm going to continue doing because I think that it's improving my health. And I was telling uh, our listeners while you were, you know, off the off the air for a second that, you know, you don't have to be an all or none type of person. Finding out, I like to find out new things every day. And, you know, now that you've told us about Natto, I, I'm going to go buy some. I'm going to keep it in my freezer and I'm going to eat it a couple times a week. I'm going to incorporate it into my normal meals. I like to add like vegetables and superfood type stuff. And you don't have to do just that. You can eat that with your fish, you know, or you can have your, your regular meals. In addition to that, that's just going to be, make you that much healthier. And then if, of course, if you have cancer or you have some kind of a situation where you're in dire straits, that's when you go to someone like you and, and do a all or none type protocol. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't I, I have different tiers also. Like right. some people are like, hey, I want to get healthier, but I'm not willing to do everything. Sure. And you just brought up one of the easiest things as part of my protocol, which is the combination of clean water, but the hydrogen. I mean, the hydrogen is shown. I mean, it was funny, one of the first studies done on it, it was by accident, but they discovered that it was basically fixing up the mitochondria for energy. And you were just saying you felt more energy. Yeah. And that's one of the things that they found that hydrogen does. And then later on through more research, it does so many things, including for cancer, um, whether you're getting. Can... I think we lost him again. I got to come in here and rescue the show. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wow. Okay. I can't see me on camera, but, but somehow we still stayed um, on. You're still fine. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. So, you know, hydrogen is definitely part of the protocol because I found that it actually enhances a lot of things. Wow. That's something that I that I personally found. Like, for example, have you ever heard of a term called like ghost veins? No. What does that mean? So this is really interesting. And, and if people Google it, they'll find it really interesting that as we age, we literally have like these veins that, that don't get blood supply anymore the way that they used to. Okay. And when we're little, like when you're little babies, have you noticed how babies are really plump? They're clearly, they're warm also, mm -hmm. and they're getting blood supply everywhere. But as we're aging, we're not getting blood everywhere. And, th and it's important to, to get the blood to where we need it to be because it carries all these nutrients, right? Mm -hmm. And feeding the tissues. Well, they discovered um, in the number one university in the world that researches hydrogen and also um, uses it medically, they discovered that it literally starts getting blood into these old places, these ghost veins again. 
And so you can start bringing nutrients in. And I, this is one of the reasons that I thought of combining the natto, which thins the blood a little bit and oxygenates things like cancer cells and combining it with the hydrogen to open up these areas along with other nutrition, by the way, I'm really big on, I don't really hyper-focus on protein. I actually focus mostly on deficiencies. So just make sure you're not deficient in anything, gotcha. all your Bs, you know, your D, you know, things of that nature. Um, because we know, yeah. Well, because we know too, you know, through science that if you're deficient in something, it often leads to disease. Like if you're deficient in, for example, vitamin C, it leads to scurvy. Yeah. And they can literally just fix it by you having proper vitamin C levels. And this goes with a lot of other things too. And so to me, it only made sense to give the body everything it absolutely needs rather than just hyper-focusing on just protein. I mean, I think protein is mostly for like growth, right? Which is why bodybuilders are into it. Yeah, I mean, repair of tissues. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's face it, aside from the bones, you know, and the water in your body, 95% of your body is is protein. I mean, everything, skin, hair, nails, skeletal muscle, all the organs. So, and that, and that stuff's in a state of constant turnover. So there's definitely a protein requirement. But like you said, it really depends on what your activity level is. If you're in the gym five days a week, breaking down massive amounts of, of muscle tissue, you're going to have a much higher need for protein as opposed to someone who doesn't really do a lot of exercise. Maybe they just do yoga or something like that. And they're not breaking down a tremendous amount of muscle. Their protein requirement is going to be a lot lower. So it depends on the person who we're talking about, right? I mean, that, absolutely. That's just logical, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, as you know, I, I was really big into bodybuilding when I was younger, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, for me, it was just because I was being bullied and, and insecurities and I was a really small guy. I still have a small build, you know, <laughs> right. but with medical issues, I realized later that, you know, there's definitely a life after bodybuilding. Absolutely. And and at some point, I, I think it's a really good idea for young bodybuilders to realize this because there's things, in my opinion, that you can do to counter some of the negative effects of everything that, that one does to try to get huge. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, it is, it, I always say that building muscle, being a bodybuilder, being an elite athlete in general, doesn't have to be mutually exclusive with being healthy. You could have both. It's just a matter of where you put your attention. I think so many people are so interested in getting, you know, the maximum benefits of the athletic uh, endeavor that they're in, that they will sacrifice health because of that. And there's no reason to do that. And I think that's the problem that, that people don't realize, you know, is that they do sacrifice that. And, and because they sacrifice health because they think they can't have health and be a great athlete, um, they're really doing a disservice to themselves. So in a sense, there is a way to do it healthy and still get maximum performance. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, not to, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different things that obviously I recommend, but I think for any, any bodybuilder, I just think what clean water is always going to be good because I remember having to put down a lot of water when yeah. I was, well, I still do, but you know, when you're lifting, you know, you, you want to put down a lot of water. And then of course the hydrogen, it, it, it enhances. I mean, there's actually been studies that have shown that it enhances performance and accelerates recovery time. And so it's, it's a no brainer, but there's a lot of other things that I personally would recommend too. Yeah. That's and, just an easy one. <laughs> and yeah. You know, and look, we know that as you know, athletes you know you only can you have so much money to spend you know on what you're going to do whether it be the protein sources you're buying or the supplements you take or gym membership or the clothes you wear i mean we have a budget we all have our own budget some people's budget is a lot higher than other people's budget but yeah what you i think what you, you made a good point earlier the water what we ingest liquid wise is so important to our health because there are impurities in water there are, you know, um, obviously hydration is super important for athletics, whether it be bodybuilding or, or you know, if you're a soccer player, you have to, hydration is super important. If, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Have you seen these? Well, because when, yeah. when I make, when I carbon distill the water, it removes yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And so this is pretty cool because this is for athletes for proper, you know, proper mineral content within the water electrolytes. Cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. I like these, I like these companies. I mean, they're cheap. You know, mm -hmm. I don't actually get anything for any of this. I mean, you were mentioned that I worked for the company earlier. I don't work for them, but I am an affiliate of theirs oh, I see. Um, because there's a lot of companies that I'm an affiliate for. And that's because I pick and choose what the best is. Yeah, and I do the same a lot of thing. Research. I do the same thing. Yeah, I, I have yeah. companies. I'm, uh, 
there's a mattress company. People think I own the mattress. I said, I wish I owned the mattress company. No, I just, I happen to be an affiliate. I like their mattress. I use their mattresses. And they said, Dave, you want to be an affiliate? I said, yeah, fine. You know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you try to, yeah, I try to do what you do is recommend brands that I, that I use and that I find they're helpful to me. And so it might be worth investing for people in a hydrogen machine because once you have the machine you can hydrogenate water unlimited i mean there's no there's no yep. and, and because you're drinking especially as, a, as an athlete so much water on a daily basis it's worth it it's in the long run but people have to understand that 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 water is that important in their daily intake that if you can maximize your performance your hydration your health by drinking the right kind of water it's going to make you that much better at what you do and healthier for that matter. So, you know, I don't push things down people's throats. I like to have shows like this to present data and tell people about what's going on. People make their own decisions, you know? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to share? I mean, I'm not trying to push this down people's throat either, but do you want me to share what carbon water distillers I recommend? Yes, sure. Absolutely. I, um, I'd like to know too. So. Um, they're at a website called mypurewater.com. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a coupon if they want a discount. It's, the same as my YouTube channel, which is Uprising 144K. And the reason I like these guys, because you can get a cheaper Chinese one for a few hundred dollars less. I like mm -hmm. theirs because I found them to be much more reliable than the Chinese stuff that breaks after a year or two. Right. They're made so in America. This is different than the hydrogen machine. This is like creating distilled water, basically. But yes, when you create distilled water, and this is important for people to understand that, you... Um, actually take all the minerals and everything out of it so you got to put the minerals back into it which is what you showed us before is that what that was that's correct and they and one of the nice things about these is they remove almost all the salt mm -hmm. so it removes almost all the salt and leaves just a lot of rich minerals this one has a little higher salt content just because of the mm -hmm. um the electrolyte aspect of it for athletes these but are yeah, not that these, expensive, these, these uh distillers how fast does it make water all right. So this is what I do. They, they take anywhere from three to six hours to make one gallon. Okay. And this is something that people should understand about water filtration. Anything that makes water immediately, like you just turn on a faucet and it goes through a carbon filter and you get the water immediately, right. will never filter your water as good as it should be. Okay. Um, it literally takes three to six hours for one gallon to make mm -hmm. it just extremely clean. And we're talking also about getting things out of water that people would have never thought about. Things like viruses, right. bacteria, and parasites and only carbon distillers do that along with the pharmaceuticals along with the PFAS there's so many things in our water and what I do is I have about six or seven glass jugs lined up and I just fill them up and gotcha. my distillers kind of constantly running you know is the way that I do it and it's not that expensive it for I don't know for one person it's about an extra I don't know my understanding is that it's about two or three cents to make one gallon um, maybe three dollars a month to run this thing. Maybe five dollars. People a month. go buy gallons of water in the supermarket, and and the water sucks that they're buying. They're buying like reconditioned water. It's not even oh, like it's, it's horrible. Terrible. So, I mean, if yeah. you're going to spend seventy nine cents on a gallon of water, then you might as well get a good water distiller and make your own water. You know. I noticed that it gets all your money back within six months to a year yeah. if you compare it to buying bo bottled water. Is literally the most expensive way to buy your water. And it really isn't as clean as you think. What about if you buy distilled water in the supermarket? Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you could. It would be probably mm -hmm. my, one of my second choices. Okay. Because the problem is, is it, sitting in these cheap plastic, and there is different grades of polymers and sure. plastics, but sitting in there, like, I can taste it. I can literally taste mm -hmm. the water and taste like right. plastic. Yeah. And you know how that affects us hormonally with the whole estrogen thing. Right, right. And so it's I not good. I thought water is more, it's more with the, the you don't want to have, like, oil-based compounds in plastic like you never want to buy like like olive oil in a plastic container or macadamia nut oil in a plastic container because that will leach those plastics right into that oil whereas i think water is not as bad because it's, it's water soluble as opposed to fat soluble but i'm sure there's still potential if the jugs get heated up too hot i'm sure something can leach absolutely i mean they're being transported in trucks they get really right. hot and yeah. sit on the shelf forever sure. i just like to make it myself and know what i'm getting I got and, you. Yeah, I am all for yeah. it too. You know, but like I said, people have a certain amount of money. You guys got to decide where you want to spend it. But hopefully, all this information we presented to you today was helpful. I want to thank Greg, the hydrogen man, for coming on the show again. You can check out that website uh, for the water distillers, and that's um, mypurewater.com. Uh, and of course, Holy Hydrogen is the name of the hydrogen maker if you guys want to check that out. And natto, I'm going to go buy some natto in the store today. Hopefully my supermarket contain, uh, sells it. 
If not, I'll have to uh, research it online. I'm sure. I bet Amazon probably sells it. You can probably buy it from them, right? You know, I think that it's probably there. I never have bought it from there, so yeah. I don't actually know. And I saw some of their prices. I thought this can't be nothing uh, because it was like, yeah, it, might be. it was like seventy five dollars. And I, I mean, I buy those little packets, yeah. those three of them, and I think they're somewhere in the neighborhood of like two eighty nine or three bucks. Oh, wow. All right, I'll so, have to look at my supermarket. Hopefully, they have it. Greg, thank you for joining us today. Pre, really appreciate it. Oh yeah, and just, I just want to say one quick thing. You know, I didn't really give all my full protocol, so we we were just we just went over a few little. Oh tidbits. yeah, I don't want to give all your secrets away. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so people are like, oh, that's it. That's all I got to do. Um, How can know, people contact is- you if they do have cancer or something like that, and they want to work with you to help you know combat it? Um, if they want to, they can one email me at uprising one four four k at gmail dot com, and obviously I provide a lot of information for free on my YouTube channel, okay. and so. All of those are ways that they can find out and learn more. Okay, excellent. We'll get, we will have you back for sure. I love all the great information you provided today. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you for joining us. Um, this is, uh, you know, something that I think is important to present new ideas and keep people fresh of the mind. I like to always learn something new every day. And so uh, this was enlightening for me. Thank you so much, Greg. And uh, for now, we are out of time. And of course, Um, If you like what you see, put them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.